Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I pray that your time spent viewing this video will be a great blessing in your life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would keep us, guide us, and use us for your glory. And make your word come alive in our ears now and in our hearts throughout life. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Uh, we are continuing the series titled, Love is More Than Words. Love is more than words. The subject for this week is perfected in love, to be perfected by God in his love. Our text is found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 through 21, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Uh, it reads, by this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. Verse 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has nothing uh, has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother uh, whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this is, this commandment we have from him uh, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Again, the subject for this week is perfected in love. Now we can be sure that God is working to perfect in us his love. We who are mortal and corruptible, defiled, imperfect, marred, sinful creatures as we may be, are the object of God's love and he is perfecting his love in us. We can be thankful to and stop grieving the Holy Spirit because he's in charge of perfecting God's love in us through the process of sanctification, setting us apart for God. To perfect is to make perfect uh, as uh, make it as good as it can be, to be brought to completion, no defects, without any flaws, and, and mature. God's perfect love, uh, God perfected his love in Jesus, his son, on the cross on Calvary. Strange as it might seem, that's where Jesus died. And God perfected his love there? Yes, Stay with me and we'll learn more. John chapter 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has no man than this, that someone lays down his life for his friend. To make my point, when Jesus returns for us, and he did go away to prepare a place for us, and one day he's coming back to receive us unto himself. And when he returns for us, we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, faster than you can bat your eye, and then we shall be like him. We don't know what we're going to be like. We know that uh, God is a spirit. Jesus is, a, going to be, is a spirit. And so we will be a spirit, but still we don't know all of what that's going to be like. But we do know that we shall be like he is. But until then, the Holy Spirit is working to get us ready for perfection. Then we will have a love that has no room for hatred. But now we press towards the mark of a higher calling. God's children will stop looking down their sanctimonious and religious noses at others when God's love is perfected in us. Perfected in love means it matters not what race, what creed, what color, 
All of God's children will be in his image and in his, in his likeness. There was a prospective bridegroom once that uh, was extremely nervous as he and his fiancée was discussing their wedding plans with their pastor. The young man said, I'd like to see a copy of the wedding, the wedding vows. And the pastor handed him the service and he read it carefully and handed it back to the pastor and then said, that won't do. There's nothing written in there about her obeying me. His fiance uh, did the normal thing, took control, smiled sweetly at him, took him by his hand and said, honey, the word obey doesn't have to be written in a book. It's already written in love in my heart for you. Perfected love brings about automatic obedience. Can I say that again? Perfected love brings about automatic obedience. John chapter 15 verse 14 says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And when God's love is perfected and it's being perfected, then being obedient to the Lord will become more automatic. It will become more of the thing that we do. It will become more of a habit, something that we do without even having to think about it. Now, this is the truth in view uh, in this portion of 1 John. Now, up to this point, the emphasis had been on Christians loving one another. But now we turn to a deeper and more important topic, which is a believer's love for the Father. We cannot love our neighbor or our brother unless we love our heavenly Father. We must first love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength, and then we can love our neighbors and we can love ourselves even. The key word in this section is perfect. God wants to perfect in us his love for us and our love for him. As I mentioned earlier, the word perfect means the, uh, carries the idea of maturity and completeness. Second Peter chapter three, verse 18 reads, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. A believer is not only to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, but we are also to grow in our love for the Father. We do this in response to the Father's love for us. We love him because he first loved us. So how, must, uh, how much does God love us? The answer is enough to send his son to die for us. John 3, 16, I'll remind you, I know you know it. It just flows off the tip of your tongue uh, fluently. But it says, for God so loved, he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. He loves his children in the same way that he loves his son, Jesus Christ. John chapter 17, verse 23 says, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved me even as you love, love them, even as you love me. And Jesus did send us into the world. In other words, he sent us into the world to express God's perfect or perfected love in us to the world. And Jesus tells us that the father wants the love with which he loved the son to be in his children. John chapter 17, verse 26, just drop down a few verses and it says, I made known to them your name 
and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. In other words, the Christian life is to be a daily experience of growing in the love of God. It involves a Christian becoming uh, or coming to know his heavenly father in a much deeper way as he grows in love. If the truth be told, it's easy to be to have a fragmented Christian life uh, by, be, by becoming preoccupied with individual pieces instead of the total picture. Our Christian life uh, is like a jigsaw puzzle with many individual pieces that need to be put together and only the Holy Spirit can put them into the right places to display the total picture in our lives. When the pieces are all in the right places, then we will love God and one another the correct way with perfected love, with perfect love. Currently, this is the way we are. One group may emphasize holiness and urge its members to get victory over sin, while another may stress witnessing or separation from the world. But each of these emphases is really a byproduct of something else. And that something else is a believer's growing love for the Father. Mature Christian love is the great universal need among God's people. So how can a believer know that his love for the Father is being perfected? 1 John chapter 4 uh, suggests four evidences. When it begins, when uh, our love for the Father begins to be perfected, we can tell it by uh, certain marks that will become visible in his life. His life will be marked by confidence honesty, joyful obedience, and victory. And in the coming weeks, we will dig deeper into each of these thoughts. And daily meditation brings about a mature and complete love in our love for our Heavenly Father and for one another. Now let's take a quick look at perfected love in action. What does perfected love look like? It's displayed on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary one Friday on a hill called Golgotha, a skull hill. The place is not the focus, even though we emphasize the place to avoid any confusion as to who we're talking about. It was the one who was lifted up in death that saves lost sinners that's being emphasized in the gospel. It was there where we see God's perfect love on display. John 3.16 is displaying God's love, his perfect love. For God so loved everybody. And to show that love that came from the Father to the Son and then to believers, Jesus, God's Son, hung, bled, and died in our place. Through Jesus, the price of redemption was paid and once and for all times. Jesus died. Somebody say, didn't he die? They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But just as he said he would, on the third day early in the morning, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to transform sin-sick lives. In his stripes, we are healed. Power to lift up bowed down heads. He changed us from looking down to the dust from which we came to looking heavenward to where we're going one glad morning. 
power to wash our sins away. Somebody asked the question, what can wash away my sins? The answer came out of nowhere and appeared at the foot of the cross. And it's there at the cross where sinners plunge beneath and lose their guilty stain. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash my sins away. And I'm glad that he died, but more so I'm glad that he rose and has gone to prepare a place for me. And when he returns, Paul says he's going to bring crowns for all of those that endure until the end and love his appearance. And with that, I'm fear. I'm, I'm, I'm finished uh, talking about perfected in love. We are, God's love is being perfected in us. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us, guiding us, and using us again in your service. And we uh, thank you that you rose to show the world and us that your perfect love is flowing through your children. And we ask that you would continue to grow us in your love, in the maturity of your love, in the confidence in your love, till we are victorious in your love. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Now don't forget to mask up, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And uh, if... Uh, uh, let's see, how can I put this? Uh, I know that there are some that have uh, good reasons not to take the, the vaccine. If you're allergic to something that the vaccine is made with, uh, you might uh, talk to your uh, physician and uh, uh, hold off for now. But if, you don't, if you're not allergic to anything, you're not uh, in a group that has... Uh, autoimmune deficiency problems, uh, uh, you might want to consider it uh, because uh, not getting the vaccine might at some time in the future keep you from something that you really want or something that you really want to do or something that you really want to experience. Uh, as uh, my attempt is to be a good leader, I got the uh, vaccine this past Friday, and on the 26th of this month, uh, I'm scheduled to get the second dose of the Pfizer uh, vaccine. My wife got it on Saturday, and uh, she's already scheduled for her second dose. I was talking to a member of our church uh, yesterday, and he and his mother have already received both doses, and uh, it, I had a little... Uh, uh, stiffness in my arm, uh, felt a little woozy for about 30 minutes, but that was it. Uh, and I haven't heard or talked to anybody that have had any kind of adverse reactions to it. So uh, do your part and continue to wear your mask, even though you might have the uh, uh, have taken the vaccine. Continue to wear the, your mask at least for two weeks after you uh, take the, have taken your last dose of the vaccine. With the J&J &J, uh, vaccine, only, you, you only have to wait for two weeks after you get the first dose. You only get one. Uh, but let's try to do our part in making this world a better place. Uh, and with that, as usual, I'm out of here. See you next time. May God bless you real good. Bye-bye.